The real reason we've asked you here today in talking about this totally integrated automation solution, it's the buzzword, what does that mean for you? We believe that there are features and benefits in this complete solution that can help your business grow, okay? And we're obviously going to show you some of those highlights today and you know, point out where we specific examples where we have that. But we also want to share with you, wherever we can as well, what your peers are saying. People who are using this software and these technologies, this totally integrated automation, the complete solution, what are they saying? What are benefits are they saying that can help them? So we'll try to reference that as we go through the day as well. Okay? So to begin with, let's, do <coughs> excuse me. let's look at the, uh, what is Siemens industry long-term vision in, in globally? The long-term vision from Siemens industry is this digital plant for manufacturing and processing. And in everything integrated, product and production life cycle, from design, engineering, commissioning, operation, customer satisfaction, feedback, and so on. And those, the, within this totally integrated automation solution, we're very close to this integrated product and production life cycle, this digital plant. But that might sound all fine and well, but let's step back and go, what are the requirements that we have heard from industry, industry experts? What are they hearing? ARC reports and so on. And what are we hearing from our own customer base? What are the requirements? And shorter time to market. More flexibility in production. That word flexibility was one of the main words from the ARC report recently on automation in general. OEMs, flexibility. Higher throughput, less downtime, clear, end users. Less downtime means more money. Improved traceability. How well is your machine running? Understanding the data coming out of the machine. Who needs the data? Where is that data going? How do you represent that data for the different audience, the different target people that need to see that data? For how well your machine and processes are running? Energy costs. Our drives colleagues will highlight today some of the key things that we have to reduce your energy costs with some of the solutions they have. And how many people in this room are shipping machines abroad, work on a global base? I know there's a few here. We talked already this morning. So one of the strongest things that we believe Siemens can bring to the table is, of course, the global service and support that we have and the long-term investment. If you look around all of these products that we have here today, especially on the back there, the wall, our totally integrated automation solution from drives, the motors, the controllers, the HMIs, we don't brand label any of that. We make it. So we have much more control over the long-term product life cycle of those products and components that you're going to use. We're not in it for the short game. Siemens is in this for the long haul. We have been investing, as Len said earlier, tremendous investments in R&D, and we continue to innovate. We have a whole range of new controllers, new panels, continuing to innovate in the automation spectrum. So what are our solutions? The solutions that Siemens offers to these problems, engineering, and features, and I'm going to show you specific features in our engineering software that can get you shorter time to market. Flexibility in production, as far as the modular architecture, wireless safety, customized products, throughput, you see here, the diagnostics, SCADA solutions to help you with the data coming out, energy efficiency and management, and of course, the global support. And what is all of this? All of this together is what I want to try and talk with you between now and up to lunchtime is this totally integrated automation concept, a complete solution, not just one piece or one component for part of your process, but Siemens can bring you everything within reason, <laughs> everything. So what I want to do as far as, okay, that's all fine and dandy, totally integrated automation, but let's bring it down to something you can relate to, a machine. So I'm going to show a short video here of a packaging machine that is using everything that you need to make that machine run. The controller, the drives, the motors, the networking. And then from that, just to give you a sense of when we talk about totally integrated automation, what that really means.
simple packaging machine, completely automated by Siemens. The engineering software, the CI portal, one engineering framework for all the automation tasks, visualization, automation, and drive. In the control cabinet, you'll see we have controllers, switches, distributed I.O., motion control, motors, sensors, inverters, drive, switch gear, everything needed for a complete solution. We're going to work with this later today, our new 1500 controller. We're going to do a hands-on lab with that today. We have an incredible range of HMI comfort panels, value to a ratio for a feature, incredible value with this panel. Remote I.O., smaller, stronger, simpler. That later on. Nothing moves without motors. Our motion and drive applications for precise control, energy efficient. And my favorite part of it, the networking, Profinet, that core open industrial Ethernet standard that connects the automation and the drive components together. None of this stuff works unless you have a good networking architecture to make everything talk. So that's basically over to now and launch. I'm going to, with that as our reference, let's go through some of those topics that you just saw and say, well, how is that going to help me? So we'll go through one of the, each one of these here, everything in this control cabinet that we, that we saw. Let's begin with the engineering software. Now, some of you in this room I talked to before we started here today are we're already working with the, um, our new engineering software, the TI portal. But for those of you who are not, I'm just going to step back and give a short explanation. What is this? So it is the one framework that you can do drive, visualization, and controller in one software. And so I use this analogy sometimes to explain to people how it works. And, and it's not exact, but it's pretty close. If you look at Microsoft Office, with Microsoft Office, you can't buy Microsoft Office without it coming standard with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. TI Portal is a little similar to that. There is no part number for this engineering software. It is the framework that is installed when you buy the Step 7 software for the controllers, or the WinCC software for the HMI, or the Drive software, Start Driver, you would buy Step 7 V12, soon to be V13, WinCC V12, and Start Drive V12. And you install them. But when, when they install and you, start, and you start it up, it's launching from one application. We're not launching different applications and different things. It's all together. And one of the key things I'd like to go over today with you is what are the benefits that come with a, a, a software package that has these things, what we believe, truly integrated, a deep integration that allows you to work seamlessly between the editors and some of the little nuggets of engineering efficiency that you get with a common database and working with these devices in one platform, some of the benefits that that can bring you. Because ultimately, let's ask here, well, how is this software going to save you time and money? Because if this, this software or any software could have a million wonderful features. But at the end, if we can't show to you where can these reduce your engineering time, it's not going to do you any good. So let's start with some open questions. And of course, these specific points I'm going to go through here over the next 15, 20 minutes, covering design, commissioning, and maintenance. Not just, there's not features in the software that just help with this part. It's the complete product life cycle that this software can offer benefits. So let's begin with some open-ended questions. How are you going to manage different software packages for PLCs, HMIs, drive, and networking needed to configure that machine? If we look at that machine, let's imagine for argument's sake that was different components coming from different vendors. They all have to be in the cabinet. They all have to communicate. They all have to work together. How are you going to do that if with different software packages? Never mind if it's from different vendors, even from the same vendor, if you've got multiple software packages. How many people in this room have more than one software package for the automation system that they're using? More than two? 
more than three, right? And then how to reuse parts of a program that can be shared across your company's product line. That's one of the main features I'd like you to take away from this presentation is reusability of developing a certain part of the code for HMI, PLC drive, and be able to reuse that without having to re-engineer the wheel every single time, and how that can help you. And other tools in the engineering software that just allow you to work more efficiently. So if we begin with, here is, unfortunately, on this presentation, I don't have time to do a live demo and show all the features. I'm just going to go from a higher level, what are specific examples that we believe can help you. So if we look at this picture here, this is a screenshot from the device and network editor inside the TI portal software. And right away, and it's the same image, or a large bit of a subset of what you see on this uh, display here. In one software package, I can configure PLCs, HMIs, remote I.O. system, drives, PC-based systems, safety, wireless, Profinet, Profibus, Aussie, these different protocols in one software package. And you go, well, okay, that's pretty good. Well, how, where does that really help me? The tag handling between the PLC and the HMI is going to be much easier when everything is integrated into one project. We did last year, over the last two years, we did a little uh, app. We, we asked people, hey, uh, send us your applications. We talked to some people about um, what is the, you know, we did a little award website. What is your best TI portal application? And we had a whole bunch of applications. And this is a little booklet that we put together. And this is on the USB stick that's in front of you. This is on here, this, this, this brochure. But what is this? This is a customer reference story. And I, I talked to a lot of the guys who, who, who I interviewed to kind of create these little case histories. And we made it very simple. We asked them four basic questions. Number one, what were the project challenges that you had? Number two, what scene of devices did you use and why? And then, of course, the third question was, what was the features in the software that you liked? And what, to that question, a common, a common answer that a lot of these customers had, oh, man, having the PLC and the HMI in one project, that just made my tag handling much easier. Okay? So we have the customers. This was a common feedback that they said from that. And then, of course, Easier to configure the networks with multiple devices in one project. I can simply drag and drop in my hardware, my HMI, my PLC, my drives, and I can select the little Ethernet port, the green dot here, and I can drag and drop to the other Ethernet port. And my networking is done. It puts it on the same subnet, and for the PLC and HMI, those are now assigned together. So the networking between the devices is much easier when it's all in one project. Okay. And you may say, well, what is that green line that's connecting these devices? That green cable inside the software, this is symbolic of the Ethernet communication between our devices, which we call Profinet. How many in this room are familiar with Profinet or what it is, what it does? I would say a few. But for those of you who aren't, Profinet is the networking technology that is at the core of the TIA, this totally integrated automation solution. It is an Ethernet uh, 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 protocol, but it, it, it leverages the benefits, the bandwidth, and the flexibility that you get with Ethernet communication, along with making sure it has the determinism and the performance that you need for I.O. and automation applications. Okay? Flexibility. It can do wireless, star, ring, safety, all of these things that can be handled on this protocol. And more importantly for you, it's an open system. It's not a proprietary Siemens uh, 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 communication protocol. There are many, many, many vendors who, automation vendors who provide components with a Profinet interface. All you need is the electronic data file, the GSD file, the GSDML file for that device. That can be imported into the software, and we can do the connection to that device to get the communication working to those third-party devices. And my colleague Anand later will t elaborate a little bit more about the networking section. So the integration, that's for sure one of the key benefits that we see with this software. Now, the next thing then, I mentioned earlier a point about reusability of code and flexibility and how can that help you. Let's imagine for a sake you've got a small machine, medium-sized machine, and a large machine. Now you may have components across your company's product portfolio that maybe it has 
the same block of code, the same HMI screen, the same tags, the same drive, the same I.O. module. And that could be basically used on variation part machine A, B, C, D. You know, they're, they're common in doing what they do. It's just different, larger, smaller variations of that machine. Well, wouldn't it be good if you could encapsulate those uh, different components into a folder so that you could engineer it once and not have to reuse it again? That is basically one of the strongest features inside this portal is using what our library concept. The library concept will give you the flexibility for OEMs that we believe what you need. So a short explanation, how does it work? On the right-hand side here, we have a library task card. And basically, the global libraries, I can add a folder. And OK, no problem. I call my feeder system one. But the magic with the global libraries is the mix of different components that you can put into that library and where you can save it. So I create my folder, go my feeder system one, and then it asks me, where do you want to save it? I can save it on this local hard drive here, or I can save it on your company network. And then inside the software, I can select whatever. I can select an I.O. device, one device, or I can lasso the whole I.O. station, and I can drag and drop it into my feeder one folder. I can come over here to my project tree, take a block of code, or multiple blocks of code, drag and drop, and put it into my libraries folder here. I can go down in my project tree, select my HMI screen, and drag and drop and put it in there, and tags, and so on. And I could lasso maybe the PLC. I could lasso this entire configuration if I wanted it to be that, and put it in the PLC, and put it in this folder. And then I close my programming device, and I go home. And my colleague comes in the next day, opens up the portal software on his laptop, comes up here and goes, open global library, browses on your office network where that folder is, what you saved the day before, and then he will appear when he opens it up inside his project on his laptop, he's going to see in here exactly what you put in there before. Blocks, tags, screens, devices, in whatever combination of folders. And you can make subfolders, however way you want to do it. So he then can drag and drop out from there into his project whatever you have done before. And there are some real advantages with that. Especially, let's say, for one quick example of safety. Who here is using safety? Safety PLC, safety I.O. devices? Right? So when you configure a safety I.O. device, what SIL, what SIL level does it need to be? What category does it need to be? So you'll configure the properties, SIL level 1 or 3, 1 out of 1, 1 out of 2 for the I.O., whoever way you have to do it. And then you can take that I safety module, stick it in a folder, and go, bum, this is the company's I.O. module. This is, when you use these safety I.O. modules again, pull it out of this folder so we kn you know, because it saves all the parameterization. Everything is saved with it, so when you reuse it, it keeps it. Okay. So that's a very, very, very important feature within the software that we see. And of course, I go back to my customer little booklet here. There's a customer in here, Applied Energy in the uh, Baltimore area. They were making gas distribution systems, OK? And I, when I talked to this guy and I asked, yeah, he said, oh, the tag handling is great. But the one feature that's really going to help me is this library feature you have. He says, well, why don't you elaborate on that? Well, he said, for these gas distribution systems, when we take an order, as an OEM, one of the things that we have to do, we have to commit that we can ship this machine and get it on that date. And we're in trouble if we're delayed. And if we can move that ship time further, if we can quote a machine and say, well, instead of two months, we can get it to you in one month, that gives us a competitive advantage over our competitors. And he specifically pointed to this feature. The library had the way to re-engineer something and reuse it. He specifically pointed to this. He says, man, once we build our libraries, because they don't build themselves, right? You have to write the code, write your blocks, configure your HMI screen. So once you're happy with them, and you're like, OK, I'm going to reuse those for different machines, and it's all tied together, he said, that's just going to cut down when we get new orders coming in. Because of course, I heard this um, uh, saying, uh, someone else, instead of living in an, in an age of, of mass automation, we're living in an age of mass customization. Everybody wants it just a little bit different, right? I want this, I want that, this option, that option. And I used to work, before I joined Siemens, I used to work for a packaging company up in, um, in, in Massachusetts. And um, sure enough, we'd have the packaging machine. We'd, and again, we had like five or six different lines of machines, pretty much all doing the same thing, shrink wrapping machines. But just big ones, small ones, different ones. But they all did essentially the same thing. And sure enough, you know, the machine would go out the door, the engineering would be done for it, we're all set, and the sales guy would call and go, you know what, mm, 
that need, we need to change that. I need to modify it. The customer wants a little this or that. And we, I'm like, oh man. So we made all these program versions of this version, that version, multiple, multiple versions of the same program. And it was just very, very hard to handle. So this is a feature that we see that can really help you handle that. Okay. Now, if I'm going to push for some questions on this in a minute. But before I do that, you may say, well, that's just, that's fine. Let's say I've developed my motor control. So very quickly, I can create custom libraries, devices, blocks, tags, screens, a mix of different items from my project can be dragged and dropped into that folder. So the key advantage, parts of your project can be shared across the company's product line. Check. Got it. Now, next thing. What happens, I've developed my motor control block, or my HMI screen that goes with it, and my tags, and I've got a nice library, and boom. I give it to all my colleagues and say, hey, use this for this machine. So they get it, and what do they do? They make a change. They edit it. I'm like, oh, I need to get that edit back. So I'm like, oh, well, which version is that? I don't know. How do, you, how do we manage these things? And there was a very important feature that came in with version 12, Service Pack 1 in the summer, that addressed this feature. So what we do is, with this new feature, we basically created a type. And you go, what's a type? Well, I can take a PLC block of code, a HMI screen, a UDT, a user-defined data type, or a HMI script, and I can drag and drop it into the library. But instead of putting it in a master copy folder, I'm going to put it in my types folder. And what does that do for me? Right at the beginning, what it does for me is I get a version control. I get a version control of my block. And you see it in the project tree. Whichever block you set up as a type, you get a version. And then every time I try to open that block to edit it, boom, you get increments a new version. So we have version control tracking on the changes. And then inside the library, because it's inside, we do it in a central place inside the project, I can test that type. So it's just the same block of code, looks the same. It's got a version number, but it's in test. And I can test it. And if I crash the machine, whoop, I can revert back to the previous version that I have. And so I can go, you know, I can handle all these different versions. So that's a nice feature. And then more importantly, this is what I really like about this feature, is when I'm happy, I'm at version 2.4 of my block, I've tested it, now I need to share it, publish it with the other colleagues. Or inside, to begin with, inside this one project, I may have 10 PLCs. Like I said earlier, we can handle multiple devices inside one project. So inside one project, I might have a, this motor control block, and I can very easily right mouse click on one of these types, and in one, one dialog comes up, and I can go publish. And every, I get a list of all of the, all of the places where this uh, type is used in the project, and I can choose update them all, and in one click, it's done. All of the blocks or devices that are in this project that we're using that type. More importantly, I can browse to the global libraries folder, and I can say, update the global libraries. And that will then, whatever type I had selected, that will update that. And then the colleagues say, oh, there's a new version up in the global libraries on the office network. I need to be using that. Okay. This feature, the library handling, and these very important extensions with version control and being able to update it and share it with your colleagues, this feature is driven was driven and is continued to be driven, continue improvements to this by the automotive guys in Germany. There's a certain nice car company in southern Bavaria, and they're building a car now for 2015, 2016. And there's, uh, there's 20 guys developing blocks, or I think they have them developed already. 20 different guys who are developing the library for all of this, for this line to work. And how would 20 different guys sharing, working together? This feature, that this is driven from those guys to get that in, OK? So when we say reducing engineering time, integration, tag handling, flexibility, this is a key feature that gives you that flexibility. How many OEMs do we have in the room here? Any OEMs? Does this resonate, what I'm saying? You think something like this would help you as you have new machines to handle your code and just you know, get your engineering down for your next project? Because that's ultimately, that's all we're here to talk to you about today. And then standards. This same, this same company wanted to push standards in code development and HMI development. How did they do it? Using this types feature. OK? And now, moving on then. Let's say I want to um, scalability. So we talked about the integration. We talked about the flexibility that the tools can give you. What about scalability? What do I mean by that? Well, 
Let's say I've got my machine done, I'm an OEM, and I've got my beautiful comfort panel here screen, it's a touch screen, everything's done, I get an order at the last minute from the sales department going, oh, no, it's going to a dirty environment, it's going to have a glove on it, you've got to change that device, you need to change it to a keypad. Or another option, let's say the machine is done, and oh, we need to add safety, they need safety, you've got to change it to a safety PLC. I've got to change the device out, but all my work is done, all my programming is done, how am I, is that, I'm going to have to rewrite everything? No. Inside the TI portal, we have a, an option called change device. And in this particular example here, I've selected this comfort panel. And I bring up this option, right mouse click, change the device. A dialog appears and it shows me on the left hand side what my current selection is, whether it's a PLC or a HMI. And then I can browse. I can browse in the folder here, what do you want? What should you change it to? Now for HMIs, there's an option in the settings as far as if you're scaling up or scaling down, how you want the buttons to, to appear centered, orientated, and so on. But then, and it'll tell you in the dialogue if you're scaling down, I need to go, maybe I need to put a cheaper, more cost-effective device on there. If you're going to lose a port or something, you'll get that information. But the key is, once you switch it over, all of the work that you've done for your HMI screens or your blocks, none of that is lost. None of that is lost. And for the safety PLC example, all of your blocks stay the same, all of your code stays the same, you just get the F runtime group added in, and then you can add your safety code to program your e-stops and your guard doors and so on. So this is a key, a, another feature that we say, hey, it just gives you as an OEM the flexibility that you need. Now, I talked about usability. Now, some of you may have seen the software before, this might be old news, but for some of these who are new, I think this, this is an important part. When we were, I was, an application engineer for Siemens for many years in, in Massachusetts and working very close. I did a lot of work with Gillette. And I was fortunate enough to go to Germany to push US requirements and usability in this next generation of software. And one of the things when we were in there in this development team, we were like, look, if you're going to put PLC, HMI, and drive software all in one box, in one space, you gotta give the user tools to work between them. And some of our competitors, when you look at some of the stuff that I'm saying here, that becomes, in my opinion, a bit of an issue. But for us, where we spent a lot of time in the development of the software, where we felt drag and drop, where would it make sense? If I've got the PLC editor here, and the HMI editor here, or the networking editor, where should I be able to, where would it make sense to work between these editors? And so basically, we did that. Anywhere where we could intelligently drag and drop, for example, in this case here, I've just defined a text, motor one, just blank text over my coil. I can drag and drop and I can put that on an assignment here on one of these empty, one of these unused output pins from my, from my card. You know, okay, that's fine. But then I can take that same output, once it's, once it's uh, defined, I can take that same uh, uh, tag and I can drag it onto a HMI screen and it's done. Or I can go from, I can select code in a watch table and drag and drop it onto the uh, um, on in, uh, code from the, uh, HMI, uh, from the ladder editor and put it into a watch table. So working between the editors, drag and drop, wherever we thought it would make, would make sense, we do it. Now, this next feature here I want to show you, this for me is a real concrete example of a little nugget of usability that you get. The cross-reference. So let's imagine, if you look at that, if you look at that wall back there behind Len, and you've got all those, what, there's maybe three or four PLCs, you've got maybe five or six HMI panels, different sizes, there's wireless on there, safety, Profinet, everything. That wall back there is one project. One project. Doesn't have to be. If you want to knock yourself out and go one device per project, go ahead. But if you want to take advantage of what the portal will bring, this is where you can bring them in together. With this project back here, you can see there's what, maybe five or six HMI screens, and they're all going back into the one PLC. So, let's say I'm trying to debug the machine. And, you know, the data's been overwritten, whatever, I need to, I need to do some cross-reference. Where is, what's, where is, who's writing to this tag? So I can select the tag, right mouse click, and bring up a cross-reference, and it brings up a list with a hyperlink to every location where it's used in the PLC, and for every location where it's used in every HMI that's connected to that device. And I can click on the link and it will automatically open it up and bring me to that point in the code. Okay, you can say that's handy, that's nice. Now, let's go back to the previous page here. Let's say when I did, when I did my tag assignment, I made a mistake. I look at the schematic. Okay, you know what? Instead of going to output 1.0, it needs to go to a different, I put, I, I, I put it to the wrong pin. The schematic is telling me, you know, I gotta, I gotta change it. So I can select this tag and I can rewire, or I could rename it. 
and I can rewire it, put in a different output pin address. And in one click, without hitting a compile, without hitting a save, every location in those the multiple HMI panels where that tag is referenced and in the code are automatically updated. Why? Because it's a deep integration, it's a single consistent database under the hood. Okay? So if you have different software from different vendors, that very quick example I showed there about just re dragging and dropping, rewiring, cross-referencing, and that's going to take you a little bit more time to do that. Okay? So that's just one example of what we have in the software for there. Now, then we have, let's get into the commissioning phase. What features can help reduce your commissioning time? Now, before we go on here, any questions on what I've, I know it's early in the morning, guys, but what I'm, so any questions on what we've talked about so far? Jerry, any? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Again, the, one of the key points of this is, is cross-reference, for instance. Has anybody ever had to work on somebody else's code? But, I was an integrator one time myself, so I had to do that all the time. And you get into the PLC code, and you find a contact in there, so you go into the PLC code, and you say, okay, do a cross-reference on that, find the coil that's actually controlling that contact. Can't find a coil. So where do you assume that's at? You assume it's on the HMI. So then you go open up your HMI software, you do a cross-reference on your HMI software, find it in there, and then you have to go to that screen and go to that component. The key feature in the reduce, reduction of uh, debug time by using this cross-reference is, again, it's available to you everywhere it's using the PLC and in an HMI without, with, by just going a click and selecting cross-reference. Right. It's a huge, huge benefit yeah. for uh, especially diagnosing machines that you may not have been involved in the right. design from the in the uh, existing or in the future. Uh, right. I, thank you, Jerry. I brought that up in the design phase. That's equally important in the commissioning phase. But what other tools do we have? Go ahead. Question? <laughs> yeah, we want everybody to hear it. Though. Yeah, uh, I'm a little bit foggy on the uh, idea of cross platforms. So let's, we have been uh, traditionally a Rockwell house, and mm -hmm. let's assume we want to start integrating some of this stuff into the Rockwell. Uh, how do how does this work? Do I get that same fu functionality across? You know, uh, let's say we're going to put a, uh, a a new Siemens PLC in there, but we're going like uh, to integrate it into this uh, thing. How do I, it's gonna go into the SLC or uh, PL, uh, into another processor. How does that work? Are you talking about vendor? The cross, the cross, uh, port, 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 the TAIA portal. Yep. How does that work when you don't have all, when you don't have all Siemens processors? Right, so what, that's a very good point. Um, there's a couple of options for that. So we have uh, other devices. That, let's say we have for Ethernet IP protocols, right? Inside, if you have a, you know, another third-party vendor PLC, but maybe you like our HMI or our drive, you know, we have the protocol that you could do. So you would have a TI Porter project, if you like, with a comfort panel in there, and it has the protocol then to set up to communicate to your third-party device. Okay, that's one way. If you wanted to. Uh, if you have, if that third-party device has a PROFINET interface or a PROFIBUS interface, there's an electronic data file for that, a file. And once we get that file, you can import that into the software, and then in the, in the device networks view, you can network those two together so they can communicate. Now that third-party device may still have its own software to configure it and so on, but if it's a, got a PROFINET or PROFIBUS interface, we can at least get the communication going easily enough inside the TI portal. Okay, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Once again, we, we do a very good job of trying to interface in the third third, third party product, especially for the Rockwell applications. Uh, we have customers that use the Comfort Panel because it both supports both Profinet and Ethernet IP. You can actually use that as a gateway, which went for data transfer between the Siemens solutions and other third party solutions. Uh, in the PLC, like the 1500, we're going to talk about later on, there's uh, Modbus TCP, which is an open communications platform that's also supported by a lot of third-party products that you can make that connection. Absolutely no charge, no upcharge whatsoever. And of, and, of course, you always have the capability of doing raw UDP or TCP sockets. So the device that you're using, let's say it's a barcode scanner, and all it does is just spit out the barcode into a, some port on a T, TCP port, we can bring that data directly to the 1500 and be able to pull that information out. 
So there's a multitude of different ways we can interface, even if the product doesn't support Profinet. And that's something we're going to talk about that a little later afternoon about the support for the third party controllers. Okay, so back on, so back on track here because of the time. Commissioning. So what are the features in the software that will help you commission? So number one for me, with the, um, with the S7-1500 and with the S7-1200 now with version 13, and for those of you who are using the TI Portal software now, just to let you know, version 13 should be officially released by the end of this week, which what day today? Today's Thursday, so tomorrow. And I'll probably do a, a release, an release uh, announcement sometime in early March once we get the iMall and everything set up with the part numbers. But that's literally on your doorstep, the version 13. But with the S7-1500 and S7-1200 PLCs, we have this trace feature. Now this feature here is very, very handy for troubleshooting sporadic faults on a machine, and you get this same editor if you're working with the drive. So not just the PLC, we also with the drive. This particular feature here, there's a company up in Sturgis, Michigan called Burr Oak Tools. They were one of the first companies, they make stamping presses, and the presses stamp out, um, they make the fins for these industrial size air conditioners. So they're stamping out all those fins. Now this is a very expensive press that they built. So they, they used the 1500, and this was their favorite feature inside the TI Portal software with the S7-1500. Why? Because they, he, this tool ver helped them to verify that the code for their press, how it was working, was doing what it was supposed to do. And their favorite feature was not only, okay, I can have up to 64 signals I can be traced at any one time, and it's inside the PLC, so I can create, hey, what signals do you want to trace, and how often do you want to trace them, and what's going on, what trigger, is it a fault condition? I can have that set up and loaded in the PLC, and walk away, go home, and in the next morning, if there was a fault on the machine, you can go online and upload it out to get your fault, to get well, what happened, and you can use the trace editor to do, to do that. Well, what they really liked, the Burr Oak, they said, well, that, that's, you have, oh, that's great, you can 64 online, but offline, when I'm working offline, not even connected to the machine, I can create hundreds, thousands of trace configurations, different configurations. Hey, this set of I.O. with this conditions, and then selectively download that into the processor at any time. So I can create hundreds, thousands of them offline. So that was something that they felt that was really, really helpful because realistically, when they were debugging the machine, for them, 64 signals tracing it online at any one time was more than enough that they could actually handle and monitor. And then, of course, we have, let's say you're online in the commissioning phase. I walk out to the machine. I want to be able to go online. I want to be able to debug the code. You go online and you go, well, we have status indication in our project tree that shows the online offline differences in the, in, the, um, in, in the code or if there's faults. My little Pepsi symbol there, if that tells me I've got an online offline difference right here in the project tree. So I can, for this particular block of code, I can start a, a detailed side-by-side -side comparison. It gives me, it highlights where the code is different. I get a list of all the differences, which I can jump to. And I also have a higher level compare editor, similar to what you see here, where I get all my blocks in a list and I can say, okay, I want to synchronize, upload, or download, which way, who's the master as far as going, working online. So that's a very, that's a handy tool as far as reducing your commissioning, your commissioning time. And then let's say for argument's sake, I don't have any hardware. The machine hasn't arrived yet. I don't want to do as much engineering ahead of time as I can. Can I simulate my PLC and HMI code together without any hardware? Yes, you can. You've got PLC Sim. This was available with our uh, uh, Step, Step 7 Professional 2010 software as well. But now, with everything cleanly integrated into one workflow, I have one button up the top here called Simulate. So in my project tree, I select the PLC, hit Simulate. It starts a soft PLC simulation on the laptop, and I can go online and help debug the code. And then if I have a HMI connected to that, I can go follow the same workflow, the same process, find my HMI in my project tree, select it, and hit the Simulate button. And here we go. I can simulate PLC and HMI at the same time. So a helpful tool for that. Now, this next feature for me is arguably one of the, I think one of the strongest things we're coming out with in combination with the software, our S7-1500 PLC, and our comfort panel. Why? How can the portal help you reduce your machine downtime? Diagnostics, diagnostics, diagnostics. So this particular control here, or this image you're looking at, this is a screenshot where I'm online with the PLC and I've got a fault, there's a problem. A system fault. What is a system fault? Short circuit, over temperature, wire break. A 
system-generated fault. So I can see that in the engineering, but more importantly, on the HMI screen, we've added for our S7, or for, excuse me, for our comfort panels, when I'm creating the screen, there's one control they're called system diagnostics. And I can basically drag and drop that control out and just like an alarm control or trend control and I size it on my screen and I'm done. Everything you see here as far as the naming and the columns and what's put in here, the system generates that for me based on your hardware configuration. This is a very, very, very handy feature. And in fact, I'm actually gonna play a short little video here that simulates this better than I can describe it. So on our S7 1500 PLC, a fault comes in. Boom, straight away, using the display, I can navigate with the display into the alarm portion to find what the fault is. So I go to diagnostics, go to alarms, go to my alarm, I get a high level limit and low level limit violation. So I see the fault there. In the HMI, my comfort panel, I get this control. It automatically updates with this text and I can browse through and I get the same information there. If I'm working remotely, all of our PLCs have web servers. I see the same information on the web server. And if I do happen to be online with the PC, with the engineering, it's red on the uh, IO card, double click on that, uh, diagnostics editor opens up and it tells me what the fault is. The user, you the user, did not have to program or decipher anything to have all of that automatically displayed and not on the drive. Drive faults, drive fault information, I can also get on my display of the 1500 or automatically displayed on the, S on the HMI panel. We had a large food and beverage director of engineering come visit us in the Georgia 400 area there before Christmas. And he was in our facility because they were having drive failures with their competitor. And so while he was there, they said, he said, okay, what else do you have? Because he was, uh, and so let's, so we said, okay, one of our colleagues showed him all of our networking and switches platform, and I showed him the engineering software. So this was a guy who had his iPad in front of him and said, at any one time, I can show, I can, I've got 20 plants running around the country, and I can see production data and so on. So senior director of engineering, and as my colleague for the networking component and pro, the, the, the different switches and cabling and, and the switches, as he went through that, he would go, oh, I like that. You get a brownie point for that. Okay, and then when I get up later, and I'm going through the different parts of the software, sure enough, some of the things he saw, the library features, oh, you get brownie, but I like that. That diagnostics feature that I showed you there, earlier here, this HMI, on this control on the HMI screen, that's just, you just put it in there, and it automatically populates with whatever uh, uh, information that it reads from your local rack or your distributed rack. He saw that, and he goes, oh, you get 10 brownie points for that. Okay, and he goes, because I used to be a control engineer in the past, and I had to program diagnostics, and I had to handle diagnostics, and every time the diagnostics changed, I had to go constantly update the screens, append the screens to make sure all the diagnostics was right. For system, and again, to be clear, for system diagnostics, short circuit, wire break, whatever, the system takes care for you. And you see it in a consistent manner on the HMI. And the HMI, I really want to focus on that, because I remember even... Um, talking to Chrysler last year. The two most important things for Chrysler, when we met them last March in just general discussions, was usability and diagnostics. And this is what I want to heart. You know, usability kind of showed a little bit, the software, nice and easy, drag and drop, whatever, but the diagnostics, because when your machine goes down, the fastest way you're gonna stop that so you don't have to get to call the electrician and he comes down and he hauls out his cart and he connects up to the machine and he tries to debug where is the problem, if you have it clearly displayed on the HMI, what the fault is, where it is, and a corrective action, that's going to save you a lot of time. Now again, system-generated faults. If you want user-generated faults, no problem. So in a certain condition, boiler one over alarm, over temp. If you want that text to display on your front of your PLC or on the HMI, no problem. We have program alarm blocks in there that make that very easy to do that as well. So diagnostics for me is definitely one of the strongest points that we wanted to show in this. So in summary then, in looking just at the TI portal, because there's a lot of other kind of things I want to talk to you about today, we believe across the design, commissioning, and the maintenance phase that we can save you up to 30% of 
approximately reducing your engineering time. So in the design phase, easy to use software and the flexibility of reusing existing data. In the commissioning phase, tools to help you find that fault and get that machine out the door as fast as you can. And then the machine is running. End user situation, I need diagnostics. And why should I have to employ a whole bunch of guys, these senior, very experienced programming engineers in my maintenance staff in case the machine goes down so they have to go out and try to debug the information if the alternative is you have diagnostics information that, that can be clearly displayed on the, on the HMI, a back, the guard door in the back of the machine is open. <laughs> go around and close that, and then you're all set. You know, so that's kind of one of the big things that we want to talk about. And this 30% reduction, where, where are you getting that from? When we talk to these customers and we ask them these questions, what were the problems that you had? And they told us on the features and what they liked, the integration and the library handling. The last question we asked them was, how has your business improved? And they gave us concrete statements. Some of them 10%, or, 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 or as far as, how has your business improved as far as reducing your engineering time? And some of them said 10%, 15%, 30%. One of them even said 40%. So with the customers that we're talking about, that's where we're getting that number from. So approximately up to 30%, we believe we can reduce that engineering time. And you know, you could say one thing, if you look at, look at your project costs, you're, you have a certain fixed cost for every machine that you build. Hardware components, PLCs, HMI drives, those are your fixed costs for a machine. So over time, those costs may go up. So our message is with the engineering software, using the tools that I'm showing you here, we can hopefully push that curve down a little bit on your engineering costs. Okay? So if there's no other questions, I want to move on right now and talk about the hardware. Because that's talking about the engineering software. And if we go back to our machine, what's the central controller that was running that packaging machine? This S7-1500 controller. And I'm just going to play a very little, very short little video here that just gives you a little snippet. What does this 1500 controller look like? Some of you in the room have used this already, so this might be old, old to you. But let's take a look at this. Every CPU comes with this display that can be removed. This is standard. We have some really neat features that you're going to experience in the afternoon that help you wire and work with the terminal modules, a little pre-wiring position here. Different positions for different gauges so you can close your door. Most importantly, with this S7-1500 CPU, how it compares to our uh, 300 or 400 is we have the motion control for drive operation built in. It can handle it and safety. Safety for the S7-1500 is right around the corner. Probably in about six, probably maybe six weeks after the version 13 is released, maybe late April period, or we are going to have safety on the 1500 controllers as well. I'm going to talk a little bit more about safety later on. But let's go through, what, so why should you care about this new controller? Well, the first thing is if you look at the display, and in the little hands-on lab we're going to have you do later in the afternoon, you're going to experience, well, System diagnostics, I get it all here. But I can also do many more things. It gives me information in all of the devices. I can change the IP address on the machine without having to hook up a laptop to do it. I can just go right on the display and do it. This 1500 controller, which you'll see later, he's got um, two separate NIC addresses on the front. He's got three Ethernet switches. So on one side, he's coming in and out, daisy chains. That could be my automation IP address, and another NIC that goes up to my SCADA level. So I can separate on two separate networks my automation and my information going up. So also the wiring, and you guys are going to do this later, a universal front connector so that's really the input, output, and analog modules that we have for this new line of PLC. We really try to consolidate the number of parts that you needed. Okay? So the, uh, a common terminal universal front connector that could, could be used. Here you see this pre-wiring position for easy installation. We're going to do this later on. So this is electrically disconnected at the back. So the guy wiring it up doesn't have to get his flashlight out and try and see, well, where is all of these? Where should I put these in? And then integrated shielding here. So a, a very easy way. So you bring your analog cable in. You strip your, uh, your wire back. Your shielding would go right here. And the little connector there that ensures that the noise and so on is uh, better ideally protected on this. And you'll see that on the cable handling at the back of the lab. Now, for any new processor from Siemens, you would expect speed and performance. Absolutely. 
But one of the key things here is, for sure, the 1500 PLC, and I'm going to throw some numbers out at you, one nanosecond bit instruction, 10, nano, 10 nanoseconds floating instruction. It's a screamer. But what is important here is the backplane speed, because it doesn't matter how fast your PLC is. You guys are all programming engineers. You know this. If your backplane speed is slow, that's going to be the limiting factor. And especially if you're using, if you say, oh, my word, we have a screaming fast backplane now, so what? Well, if you're using specialty modules out here, technology modules, counter modules, whatever, communication modules, you know, if the backplane speed is not fast, that's going to be your, you know, your, your input and output time is going to be affected by that. So for those of you, you know, this is extremely fast backplane. It's up to 40 times faster than our current S7400 PLC. Okay, so it's absolutely screamer. So for performance, high performance application, the 1500 PLC is our top offering right now. And then here, I talked earlier about the ports. This kind of shows a little clearer if you look under the CPU. Here you can see I've got three ports on here, but two of them are switch, a built-in switch. So you go in, daisy chain, in and out, and that's one IP address. And this would be the other IP address for your company network. And then also we've got, you know, obviously we can handle Profinet I.O. and this iDevice, shared device thing. For those of you who aren't, what's iDevice? What's shared device? This is a feature on Profinet where you can do easy PLC to PLC communication without having to write code in either the source CPU or the destination one to get the communication to go. You basically can very easily assign an I.O. area in either device to where you're sharing, where the data is going to go back and forth, okay? So that can be very helpful. And then in summary then again, system diagnostics built into the system. So we can also get the diagnostics even when the CPU isn't stopped. So consistent, this is the main message for us. So across the panel, the engineering, on the front of the CPU, or even in the web server, you get that clear information without having to write a single line of code or decipher bit one, what is that? That's a short circuit. And how do I get that up to the HMI screen? You don't have to do any of that. It does that for you. Now, security. I'm going to talk very quickly here about some of the key for the four, th four things here that we believe can really help you. So the first one are no hair protection. This is basically the ability to hide your code, to protect your code, your intellectual property. How many of you are shipping machines overseas and maybe you're concerned about your code, your intellectual property being, being uploaded out and somebody stealing that? Well, with the S7-1500 CPU, you are not going to have to worry about that. Why? Because if you write, I can select a block of code and just right mouse click and give it a password. And your visible code is then hidden. And if you know the password, you can, you can see it again. The key is, is that when you download that to a machine and you ship your machine, somebody comes up with a laptop in the portal and tries to upload that out. No problem. He can upload it to the program. If he has the software, he can upload the program. But he's not going to be able to crack open that block because of the enhanced encryption that's on those blocks. Okay? So if that's an important feature for you, the 1500 is a key. You should be looking at that. And copy protection. Somebody, you don't want somebody to be able to take out the memory card and then just put it in another machine to try and duplicate what you're doing to see if you can get it to work. We can bind, we have the ability to bind the, your program to a particular serial number of a memory card. Okay? And then access protection. So those of you who may be familiar with our current PLCs or even some of the other uh, co competition, sure, you go online with your laptop the first time and you can set up a password. I'm even going online with this CPU. You need to enter in a password. Okay. And if you want to edit the code, you need a password. That's another level. But what happens? What happened? What about the HMI? That's communicating directly to the PLC. What happens if that was somebody's banging away on, a, on, on an I.O. field there that might be hitting a memory area in your PLC you don't want them to touch? How do you protect against that? With the S7-1500, we added an, an, another level of protection that, that basically means it shuts out if you want to do it. You set up the password for your comfort panels. So they, too, need a password to be configured to communicate to the PLC. Okay? And then most importantly, then, is the manipulation protection. And I'm not a hacker expert. And if I was to say to you here today that all hacking were good with the 1500, that's like raising the red flag, right? And they will come after me. And, you know, but, so the point is here is the issues that we are aware of, the man-in-the-middle attack, the password sniffing, the replay attack. So somebody's on your network, and they, they, they're able to monitor the data going when you download. They're able to record that and then replay it back. 
And all of a sudden, they're able to download. All of those known issues that we are aware of are fixed with this S7 1500 PLC. And the additional communication modules we have also have that, as well as the VPN and firewall protection. OK? So that is a big part. Now, that's the 1500 controller. I'm going to move on pretty quickly here to kind of give you a high-level overview of some of the other features we have. Somatic S7 controller. So how many of you are using familiar with this S7 controller? For the point with this is, for micro applications, S7 1200 PLC, this is for us the absolute most cost-effective and feature-rich PLC that we offer as far as in this cost-effective micro range. So it's got a wide range of I.O. modules, and it's I, this is ideally suited with the, our basic panels. So if you have OEMs, if it's a low-cost machine, cost is an issue, our S7-1200 and basic panel is the way to go. So Profinet is standard in all CPUs. Tag names, comments, loaded, so I can upload, I get everything out, no problem, and compact integrated I.O. So it's pretty, pretty easy. It's a very, very feature-rich um, controller in that micro range. Moving on then, as far as a summary of the controllers, where we are now, we have in the micro range, I just showed you some of the highlights of the 1200 and especially for the 1500, but of course for S7, 300, and 400 controllers, they're absolutely available. They're not, they're absolutely no mention. Those things are going to be around for a long, long, long time. But we have to innovate. And for new projects, or if you're a new customer, of course, this is something that we would, you, could, we would, you know, you can look for if that would suit your needs. Now, let's get into the HMI. Let me just check the time here. Any questions on the controllers before I go any further? Yep. The S7 200 that is in that uh, that is a, that is a phase out that we have now, and that is being phased out. I think I think. I think October 1 this year, I can't remember the exact date, but um, that was the S7 1200 is the replacement for that. And I would say if you have S7 1200s, that you should be, you know, the Siemens colleagues, the Siemens account managers, whoever are working with you, should be working with you to actively help you in that transition phase from migrating the code, whatever you have to do, to migrate into the S7 1200 family. The question was, what about the S7 200s? OK, too fast, too slow, makes sense. Just wanted to give you kind of the high level overview of all the products in this TIA solution. Go ahead, Jerry. I'll try again to talk. Uh, did you say that one of the, one of the ports on, the, on this processor is a managed switch? What level of managed switch is it? Did I misunderstand that? Anand, can you answer that question? I don't believe okay. it's a managed switch. The right. port, I don't believe it is. No, the, the, the built-in uh, two-port switch for the ProVNet network is an unmanaged switch. Okay, it's an unmanaged if you, if you want to go managed switches, then you go to our Scalance products, which would be an external, external uh, switch. And that's something, again, our colleague will talk a little bit later on. Comfort panels. This, for sure, for me, there's such a, a tremendous performance uh, value price ratio here in these, in our, in these um, panels. This little video here I'm going to play, this gives you kind of that high level overview. What are the offerings? Let's begin with the basic panels. So, come in a wide variety of sizes, and obviously, cost uh, and feature here, this is the, the most, primarily the most uh, dominant uh, uh, feature here that you're looking at. But we do have high resolution displays. Configurable keys, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, it's ideally suited with the S7-1200 PLC. Our comfort panels, these are our main line of panels that we would offer and have a tremendous feature-rich offering. Come in a wide variety of sizes, as you can see here, and then you know, wide angle up to 16 million colors, 80,000 hour backlight, brilliant displays, and of course, I had this application for, a, for a, 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 an elevator in the Texas area. Wouldn't fit. We needed a portrait. No problem. We have portrait panels in there as well. So switch built in 
to these devices so I can daisy chain them together without having that external switch if you don't want it. Over a whole variety of ports, USB ports and everything to get data from the device and ideally matched with this 1500. And of course, comfort panels, everything is configurable inside the TI portal software. Now, I don't know how many of you, what about mobile applications? If you can't, you need to be mobile. So we have a wide range of mobile panels as well. Um, so here we have the uh, even more freedom. So we have uh, the uh, wireless safety on here. And one of the things, the key differential, we can do cat, I think it's still level three, safety, wireless on these devices. Okay. And then we have this other issue here, or the other uh, are KP8 or KP32 devices. And this is basically meant to replace a push button, a push button station, where you can configure the text and the color of these buttons. But it is a Profinet device. Okay? So that's kind of a high level overview of what we're offering here. Okay? Now, let's go through that then in a little more detail. Oh, we have actually for um, special requirements, if you want to have your company label on the front, whatever, we can offer that as well on the panel side. So on the comfort panel, so absolutely the exceptional price to value ratio, rugged cast aluminum, up to 16 million colors, 80,000 hour backlight, and a very good automatic backup and restore concept. I remember at my time at Gillette, I would see the operator running the machine and he's got a screwdriver in one hand turned upside down like here, and he's you know, pushing the reset button and the start button, and then he's using the back of the screwdriver to control the screen, and every now and again, he'll turn around and <laughs> you know, if you, if you put your screwdriver through the front of this, you can very easily restore through the SD card that's on the back. You can uh, restore the uh, program right back. You can take it out of stock, put a new one in, restore it, and you're right back up where you were before. We have a complete line of basic panels, second generation panels, which are significantly improved over the first generation. These will be released in the next month or so. These are coming out. Where we've increased, we've gone widescreen, we've got USB data archiving, and we have um, enhanced the backlight, uh, 80, I think it's 16,000 colors, 16K colors instead of the 256. So significantly improved on those. And then on the keypads, so what this is, again, you can configure this. The whole idea with these is, is that instead of having a push button station, these are a Profinet device that are configurable, that you can configure the color and the text on here. So that can reduce your wiring going out. Okay? And then looking at the mobile options, they are wired options and they are wireless. And we have safety, still level three, wireless ESOP by a Profinet on here. For food and beverage applications, we have a new line of Inox comfort panels coming out that are stainless steel, so IP66 protection and shadow protection. So uh, ideally suited for food and beverage, stainless steel. And of course, what's really cool about these is this, they have this optimized frame for liquid runoff and a rear tensing frame that ensures, you know, because the issue, of course, with washdown applications is if the, uh, the water gets in behind the back and ro it corrodes the seal. So there's a, a rear tensing frame that ensures an even seal of pressure around the back. Okay, and then highest efficiency. So this is a screenshot of just showing the uh, engineering software inside the TI portal, the P PLC and HMI together. For those of you who are using our comfort panels already, just to let you know with the version 13, we have a complete new look and feel as far as the controls are concerned. So you can set up your own design. There'll be a new design center built into the software. So for your gauges, your switches, if they want to have a certain look and feel, you can set that up and you can configure that. Okay, now, we started about 15 minutes late. It's about 11.25. I've been yakking on for the last hour or more. Any questions, guys, before we just take a short little, little coffee break? Or should I keep going? I know the answer to that. <laughs> How does it work when uh, multiple people are working on the same system? You know, one person's got the HMI, PLC, right. drives, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's, a, there's a couple of different ways we can do that. If you, t if you look at it from offline perspective, if you're work just working offline, then the libraries features I mentioned earlier, that is one way to do that. 
you bring your, you know, the PLC guys over here, the HMI guys over there, and they're doing their work. And then offline, they could bring those projects together via the library feature. Online, if you're working online we, with version 13, we will have the ability that up to five guys can be online at, at this one PLC at the same time monitoring the code. How does the master work then? That now I don't I don't because I haven't don't have version 13. I haven't had a chance to really see the the the, the details of how that would work. Um, but the multi-user feature, being able to multiple guys online and how do you manage it? Who's got control? Who's editing it? Is the block checked out? Or checked in and so on. That is going to come in a phased-in approach. The first step, kind of monitoring the code with version 13, more guys on multiple guys online at the same time. And then the extensions to that of who's editing it, who's got control, that will be added in with the service pack one that will come later in the year. But that is the core. So for online, okay. If, if you're working in, if you if you're working in that uh, offline, and so we we change something in the in the library, yep. can we incrementally download that to? I don't know how you organize it, but you incrementally download that so you don't have to download the whole process, the whole program. Well, you can, first things first, when you make a rev control and you publish it, right? Let's say there's 10 PLCs in your project. You can, they can all get that block at the same time offline. We do have the ability, if you're online, you can do a download and you, so you select the highest level. It will go download this PLC and this PLC and this PLC. Got one guy working on one. We got one guy working on one routine and another guy working on another routine. That is, and that is the. Can you incrementing incrementally download that, or do you have to download the whole process or program? It block by block. Done, it will block be done. Block. Yeah, it will be block by block. But that feature, that is, that's not going to come with the version 13. That's going to come a little later with the service pack one. So that whole the rounding out that whole multi-user feature. We recognize that's an important thing that you need, but. With the version 13, it's a step, you know, just it can get online. What can, you do, what can you do online as opposed to offline? Can you create data table space? What, what things can you do online that you can't, you, or you, you, you have to do online, that you, you have to do offline that you can't do online? Well, I think creating new data blocks and, you know, creating new screens, I mean, they have to be done offline before they're downloaded to the PLC. Right. You download, you have to put the thing, you have to stop the process nope, to nope, download. No, nope. you can download and run, absolutely, for all of the controllers. When you're online, you're primarily using the watch tables. You're online, you're watching code, you can use the trace, you know, the watch tables, the variables. But once you're editing, you make the edit offline, and then it's a step to then download that change to the PLC. <laughs>